Hello everyone, it's time for us to finish our book, My Father's Dragon. We're on chapter 9. We're going to get started. Let's go. Chapter 9. My Father Makes a Bridge. My father walked back and forth along the bank, trying to think of some way to cross the river. He found a high flagpole with a rope going over to the other side. The rope went through a loop at the top of the pole and then down the pole and around a large crank. The sign on the crank said, to summon dragon, yank the crank. Report disorderly conduct to gorilla. From what the cat had told my father, he knew that the other end of the rope was tied around the dragon's neck, and he felt sorrier than ever for the poor dragon. If he were on this side, the gorilla would twist his wings until it hurt so much that he'd have to fly to the other side. If he were on the other side, the gorilla would crank the rope until the dragon would either choke to death or fly back to this side. What a life for a baby dragon. My father knew that if he called to the dragon to come across the river, the gorilla would surely hear him. So he thought about climbing the pole and going across on the rope. The pole was very high, and even if he could get to the top without being seen, he'd have to go all the way across hand over hand. The river was very muddy, and all sorts of unfriendly things might live in it. My father could think of no other way to get across. He was about to start up the pole, when despite all the noise the monkeys were making, he heard a loud splash. He looked all around in the water, but it was dusk now, and he couldn't see anything there. It's me, Crocodile, said a voice to the left. The water is lovely, and I have such a craving for something sweet. Won't you come in for a swim? A pale moon came out from behind the clouds, and my father could see where the voice was coming from. The crocodile's head was just peeping out of the water. Oh, no, thank you, said my father. I never swim after sundown. But I do have something sweet to offer you. Perhaps you'd like a lollipop. And perhaps you have friends who would like lollipops, too. Lollipops, cried the crocodile. Why, that is a treat. How about it, boys? A whole chorus of voices shouted, Hooray! lollipops, and my father counted as many as 17 crocodiles with their heads just peeping out of the water. That's fine, said my father, as he got out the two dozen pink lollipops and the rubber bands. I'll stick one here in the bank. Uh, lollipops last longer if you keep them out of the water, you know. Now, one of you can have this one, crocodile who had first spoken swam up and tasted it. Delicious, mighty delicious, he said. Now, if you don't mind, said my father, I'll just walk along your back and fasten another lollipop to the tip of your tail with a rubber band. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, not in the least, said the crocodile. You get your tail out of the water just a bit, said, asked my father. Yes, of course, said the crocodile, and he lifted up his tail. Then my father ran along his back and fastened another lollipop with a rubber band. Who's next, said my father, and a second crocodile swam up and began sucking on that lollipop. Now, you gentlemen can save a lot of time if you just line up across the river, said my father, and I'll be along to give you each a lollipop. So the crocodiles lined up right across the river with their tails in the air, waiting for my father to fasten on the rest of the lollipops. The tail of the 17th crocodile just reached the other bank. Chapter 10. My Father Finds the Dragon. When my father was crossing the back of the 15th crocodile, two more lollipops to go, the noise of the monkeys suddenly stopped and he could hear a much bigger noise getting louder every second. Then he could hear seven furious tigers 
and one raging rhinoceros and two seedling lions and one ranting gorilla along with countless screeching monkeys led by two extremely irate wild boars all yelling it's a trick it's a trick there's an invasion and it must be after our dragon kill it kill it the whole crowd stampeded down to the bank as my father was fixing the 17th lollipop for the last crocodile he heard a royal wild boar scream. Look, it came this way. It's over there now, see? The crocodiles made a bridge for it. And just as my father leapt onto the other bank, one of the wild boars jumped onto the back of the first crocodile. My father didn't have a moment to spare. By now, the dragon realized that my father was coming to rescue him. He ran out of the bushes and jumped up and down yelling, here I am, I'm right here. Can you see me? Hurry, the boar is coming over on the crocodiles, too. They're all coming over. Oh, please, hurry, hurry. The noise was simply terrific. My father ran up to the dragon and took out his very sharp jackknife. Steady, old boy, steady. We'll make it. Just stand still, he told the dragon as he began to saw through the big rope. By this time, both boars, all seven tigers, the two lions, the rhinoceros, and the gorilla, along with the countless screeching monkeys, were all on their way across the crocodiles, and there was still a lot of rope to cut through. Oh, hurry, the dragon kept saying, and my father again told him to stand still. I don't think I can make it, said my father. We'll fly over to the other side of the river, and I can finish cutting the rope there. Suddenly, the screaming grew louder and louder and madder, and my father thought the animals must have crossed the river. He looked around and saw something which surprised and delighted him, partly because he had finished his lollipop, and partly because, as I told you before, crocodiles are very moody and not the least bit dependable, and are always looking for something to eat. The first crocodile had turned away from the bank and started swimming down the river. The second crocodile hadn't finished yet, so he followed right after the first, still sucking his lollipop. All the rest did the same thing, one right after the other, until they were all swimming away in a line. The two wild boars, the seven tigers, the rhinoceros, the two lions, the gorilla, along with countless screeching monkeys, were all riding down the middle of the river on a train of crocodiles, sucking pink lollipops, and all yelling and screaming and getting their feet wet. My father and the dragon laughed themselves weak because it was such a silly sight. As soon as they recovered, my father finished cutting the rope, and the dragon raced around in circles and tried to turn a somersault. He was the most excited baby dragon that ever lived. My father was in a hurry to fly away. And when the dragon finally calmed down a bit, my father climbed up onto his back. All aboard, said the dragon. Where shall we go? We'll spend the night on the beach, and tomorrow we'll start on the long journey home. So it's off to the shores of Tangerina, shouted my father as the dragon soared above the dark jungle, the muddy river, and all the animals below bellowing at them, and all the crocodiles blink licking pink lollipops and grinning wide grins. After all, what did the crocodiles care about a way to cross the river? And what a fine feast they were carrying on their backs. As my father and the dragon passed over the ocean rocks, they heard a tiny, excited voice scream, Bumcack! Bumcack! We dreed our nagin! I mean, we need our dragon! But my father and the dragon knew that nothing in the world would ever make them go back to the wild island. That, my friends, is the end. So I hope you've enjoyed this wonderful story of my father's dragon. And I'll be coming to you with some more stories as we go along. Much love to you all. Ms. V.